All right, this is a response video to uh, a Jason, a zombie collector's uh, I Have Seen the Light video about the whole card situation at the moment. He just went to a card show that he hasn't gone to in about half a year. And um, back in the 90s, I even used to set up at card shows. Not very many, but did a few. And sold, you know, one or two cards. Never paid for my table. I never had a whole lot because uh, cards were just difficult to come by. And if you bought retail and and um and paid full price then you were not going to get full price but even as hot as the cards in the 90s everybody already seemed to have the cards that i was trying to sell and they were not interested and i was maybe trying to i don't know what i was trying to do i try to upgrade to vintage or what have you um and then the card shows lasted until like 2000 and i think the last card show i went to was at a casino i think it was a spirit mountain casino and i had a great time there i think i got a duke snyder a beat up 58 Snyder for 75 cents or something like that. It was ridiculous, and we thought that was the coolest thing I did. And and then I uh, I had a Michael Jordan poster uh, with uh, Spike Lee. It was uh, the best on Earth. It was on Mars. I left that at my friend's table, and I guess he either left it or forgot it, and and I forgot it. And so that poster was lost forever. It's a super rare poster. I got it for like a dollar at a card shop that was closing, and it was a uh, cut. The top was cut, so it wasn't worth a ton of money, but that's a, still a rare poster uh, with a Spike Lee's, you know, do you know, do you know, do you know, or something like that. I don't remember the whole thing there, but anyway, so I haven't been to a card show since around 2000. There might have been the odd uh, flea market swap meet where a vendor was selling sports cards, and but usually not exclusively sports cards, so I do not have that option available to me. But I do remember, you know, buying cards like for my Mork and Mindy set, which I've I completed, I think, last year. Um, and then I would buy like, you know, 75 tops, 78 tops in like kind of the boxes of, of value boxes, what have you. And that was fun and that's how I got started on a lot of my set building with the 84 and 87 tops. Then I started building this uh, 2019 Heritage set here. And I think I'm missing 200 cards from the set if I'm not mistaken. I just added four cards to the set yesterday and what I've always done is put these numbers inside there when I have a piece of paper laying around. That's card number 258 that I'm missing, you know, and, and I haven't gotten to this binder quite yet. But uh, And these are the sticky pages, but um, those are free at a card shop. So, um, speaking of card shops, as far as card shops go, I've really only had two main card shops. One called Tipton's and one called The New Hobby. The New Hobby has since had a new owner. And Tipton's, at the last time I checked, was a by appointment only. And I don't need to go there for some um, 90s junk wax. They specialize in a lot of the 90s type stuff in their display cases and, and some of the vintage as well. And they have a mountain of cards in the back, but you've got to catch the owner at the right time or you've got to catch one of the employees that knows a little bit about the cards. And um, so that's kind of hit and miss right now. And then the new hobby, great card shop over the years. And I got plenty of vintage and, and uh, I did quite well with the old owner and the new owner is, is, is awesome as well too. It's just that they don't have a lot of uh, base cards to dig through at a lot of these shops here. So they might have grab bags, what have you, packs, that sort of thing, but they just don't have the cards, you know, the value boxes. Sometimes there's a dollar box, you know, and it could be just, you know, like the Reese Hoskins, that type of stuff in the dollar box. But nothing that you could, you know, really write home about if you're trying to collect 1978 tops. You might, you might find one or two cards there. You might find a Pete Rose with a damaged corner for two bucks. And that's the only card you got. And if you already got Pete Rose and if you need Pete Redfern, well, then there's no way you're going to get Pete Redfern if he's in that set. So um, that's kind of where I'm coming from, from those kind of standpoints here. And, of course, as far as all the new stuff is going on, um, when, you, when your card shops don't have any base or set cards, or if you're trying to collect 2019 um, Alan Ginter or, or even 2019 Heritage are some of the Ginter minis that I have there. You know, and I also, of course, collect cards for getting cards autographed. And it's great for the, to go to eBay and buy the $1 card. As I always say, the eBay, eBay value boxes are a great source of, of, uh, of stuff. And I found those CFL cards for a buck a card. And I think I got free shipping because I bought $10 worth or something ridiculous. You know, so there's that. But at a dollar a card for that um, uh, Topps 2019 uh, Heritage set, 
I'm missing over 200 cards. Some of them are the average between one and five dollars a card, and there's a few SPs that are made twenty-five dollars. So I'm looking at between two hundred and four hundred dollars to finish off that set, and that's not worth it to me at all. So I'm going to just, you know, uh, find the cards, you know, when I do uh, one or two are here laying around. Um, I don't know where I'm really going with this, but. Um, as far as selling cards, I mentioned earlier that I used to sell some of card shows. I don't really sell cards anymore. I've done a few trades, and I and I mostly give away cards. Mostly the the better cards that I've kind of scrimped and saved were just absolutely a chore to get. You know, unless they were an eBay thing, it was a it was a deal. Um, you know, but so I just don't uh, do a lot of selling. Um, you know, because the cards that I have, everybody has dozens or you know and dozens of so there's no reason why for me to go sell a whatever this is here pick a random card here uh olsen you know matt olsen or whatever i mean yeah i tried it might put 50 cents on it and no one's going to want it unless you're a matt olsen collector and you probably already have that so that's kind of where i'm at um Oh yeah, and, and uh, Dollar Tree used to have cards. They were always junk wax era cards, 90s stuff, and you got a few 80s things in there mixed around, but they don't have that stuff anymore. They had Don Russ come through, and the Don Russ started to disappearing, disappearing, and, and I've never seen anybody buy these four or five packs, and the yellow Don Russ cards were selling for hotcakes, and we knew something was up when that happened, and then the whole year just went crazy after that, that whole Don Russ thing. I mean, I don't even know if that stuff is what that stuff goes for anymore but I, it was just like shooting fish in a barrel you were getting great cards um base cards and that sort of thing and people were making five ten dollars a pack um because they would sell the cards for each for a dollar and then they would sell the yellow one for any between one and five dollars and they were getting that it's insane um so really i don't have much else to add other than um i just get cards where i can when i can find them and eBay is my, you know, LCS, as, as a lot of people like to say. And this card I got many years ago, signed it, had it signed. And that just random. It was on the table. So, hope you enjoyed that. I don't know if you got anything out of it. Um, Jason, I don't know if that's really what you wanted. But just early in the morning, I was just bored and kind of slow morning. Thank you for watching. Pepsi.